film. <laughs> well, getting back to that Hillary Clinton comment, you might like this. Some person said, no, 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 I'm not seeing the Hillary Clinton vibe. I'm seeing Shirley Jones. Now, that, did you ever hear that? Oh, that's interesting. I've never heard that one, but I, I, I kind of prefer it. It's certainly better. Anything is really better than Hillary. So, yeah, Shirley Jones. Oh, yeah, I mean, Shirley, Jones, Shirley is Jones is one of those, you know, like when people talk about uh, women who men have crushes on, it's usually not Marilyn Monroe. It tends to be, you know, the chick from Bewitched. Marianne on Gilligan's Island. Yeah, no, it's sort of that theory of uh, why, why do men like chambermaids? It's 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 a, it's, a, it's a girl in your room. Yeah, you know, that's all. That's, that's right. all it takes. <laughs> <laughs> and she'll leave eventually. Yes. Which is a big thing. And you only have to leave a five dollar tip. So that that's mm -hmm. also uh, a plus. But uh, I I uh, I guess that Ginger Marianne um, debate that went on in uh, Toronto as well, huh? Or Hamilton. Oh what? yeah, we well, we had all those debates. You know. Um, the, the book Generation X was written by a Canadian, and it has all that stuff in there about how uh, my generation was kind of obsessed with the Betty or Wilma, uh, you know, who would you sleep with on Gilligan's Island? Like, you know, we could spend many, many hours uh, having serious debates about stuff like this. Why always the, the women comparisons? I never hear women say, hey, uh, Greg or Peter, you know, or, uh, you know, um, the professor you or, been... or Gilligan. You, you you haven't been in the room when they've been having the conversation. Oh, you know? that's it. <laughs> you know. <laughs> it, then it gets really disgusting, you know. I remember Martin Short in an interview a while back. He was talking about his childhood in Canada, and he said that there was this um, looking from afar kind of attitude to, to, the, to the United States, a little bit of a, like a envy, or not envy, but, you know, like the little brother. And he, he remembers running into uh, to, to, to his mother's uh, room and, and, and shouting, they mentioned Canada on TV, because <laughs> he was watching U.S. television. And he was so excited that they mentioned the entire country. I can't imagine that kind of mindset. Is that is this a truism, or um, to any extent? Um, that that is actually pretty true, and it, it even goes on today. A lot of our newspapers and TV shows, our news shows, will call. Well, Canada was in the news today when Howard Stern farted out, you know, the, <laughs> the national anthem or something. Who knows? Right? And it's a big deal. But the the best story about that is that. Uh, we ha our newest newspaper, which used to be conservative and now sucks because everything basically starts to suck, uh, the National Post. And they had every member of the Richler family writing for them. And, and you know, Mordecai Richler, one of our great novelists, had a bunch of kids. And like everybody in Canada, that meant that all his kids got to work in media as writers and things like that. So they had like 16 Richlers on the masthead. Well, then, you know, being an old guy and stuff, Mordecai Richler dies. And so, of course, they put his very lovely obituary on the front page of the National Post. So the next day, uh, because, you know, he did write stuff like The Apprenticeship of Judy Kravitz and, and that, uh, the New York Times does an obituary of Mordecai Richler. And it's very nice and, and uh, you know, people. So the day after that, Front page of the National Post, New York Times prints obituary <laughs> of Mordecai Richler. And that is the, basically, that is the Canada and, and America, you know, in a, in a nutshell. I, um, I've never been to Toronto, but I've been to Montreal. And Montreal reminded me very much of a city that's here in, in, um, in, in New York, uh, New York State, called White Plains, New York. I wasn't that impressed with Montreal. Um, maybe I didn't hit the... The tourist spots, that's because we went with a person who goes there to meet a friend. So I was on, what, St. Right. Catherine Street? Is that is that the big thoroughfare there, St. Catherine Yeah, Street? yeah. Yeah, and it wasn't that impressive to me. Um, uh, was I in the right area in Montreal? Um, you know, most uh, waterfront areas on Earth are, are really more interesting just because they tend to be older because they were settled first. And old Montreal... Uh, where the streets are still, you know, cobblestones and stuff like that, is 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 quite nice. Um, Montreal isn't really known so much for, um, you know, oh look at that awesome building. It's more uh, the people and the attitude and partying. Montreal was always the kind of naughty place. 
it's like they had burlesque shows, whereas Toronto, there was no way. Like, you know, we, we didn't even have Sunday store openings until a couple of years ago. So it's not so much that it looks great, but that once you're kind of on the ground and maybe with a local, you'll get to go to, you know, this underground bar or, oh, yeah. or whatever. Yeah, that, we, we yeah. were there for a bachelor party. They said, oh, we're going to go to this beer garden. I said, okay, fine. And I, I imagine something quaint, uh, you know, German maybe. Um, yeah. it, it, we, went, we went down some stairs into a building basement, and it was a huge room with low um, ceiling with fluorescent lighting, and the room was covered in uh, um, picnic tables, that, you know, like long, <laughs> long cafeteria tables with metal chairs, and it looked like it was going to be a meeting for... Uh, the Teamsters or something, but that was the beer garden, and everybody sat around and they just drank beer under these fluorescent lights, and and it was no music. It was just it was it was the most it was the most uh, institutionalized beer drinking I've ever seen in my life. But they were hardcore. That drinkers. is weird. Be, that's very weird because it, it sounds like you know the you went to the only place in Montreal that sounds like it's from Ontario. Uh, it. <laughs> That sounds like, you know, um, a Legion Hall, uh, you know, in Hamilton about 1965 Yes, or it felt like that's, a Legion Hall, but bigger. Weird. Usually Montreal is very, you know, discotheque, uh, you know, dark lights and, and skinny ladies with little martini glasses. Oh, we, and, we found those places as well, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the strip Which, clubs, you know, the strip clubs were yeah. all nude. Which was very strange. Oh, yeah. We did, that's not legal in New York. Uh, no, New, no. New York City. Which uh, and uh, front row seating was usually all rabbis. What was up with that? That was very strange. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that's interesting. Yeah, that uh, that yeah, that's uh, that sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> we have time for one more question. I, I did have a question because I, I like to go to YouTube and discover n new things. Is there a show from your childhood or teen years that we wouldn't be aware of in, in, uh, in the United States that was a cultural phenomenon in, in Canada, but on par with like something like the Brady Bunch or something cheesy that only Canadians had? Well, that's a, that's a tough one. Um, well, obviously, I mean, you, you all know about it now, but we had SCTV long before oh, yeah. it ever went down to the States, and that was our thing for a long time before, um, well, all those people made it big, but also before people started being able to see, uh, you know, episodes of it because it would get broadcast in the States. And for a long time, that was our our show. Uh, and, and that is kind of childhood. I mean, I was in maybe like grade 9 or 10 or something. And uh, to this day, most Canadians I know can speak to each other almost entirely in SCTV catchphrases <laughs> and... And they don't even have to line up with actual, like, it's not like if I say sell 40 shares, that means get me a beer. It doesn't have to mean anything at all, but we still know what we're talking about. It's, uh, it's very strange. Um, but we don't have 300 million people. We don't have enough millionaires to invent a Hollywood that's now 80 years old. Like, that just didn't happen. There are a million reasons why Canada... Uh, just doesn't have that kind of entertainment infrastructure. For instance, like, um, you guys have always had The Tonight Show. Mm -hmm. And The Tonight Show is just a super colossal phenomenon that started so many people's careers, and it, it, it affected what people talked about at work the next day. And, you know, Johnny Carson, he was part of your life, and da, da, da. We've never had a late-night talk show. And I think... That's a problem. You, you know, had, you had you Alan know, Thick. You had Thick at Night. Well, oh my God, please, oh my God. See, like, no. <laughs> Which, again, nobody wants. And and because we, we have these voids, um, I think it's made this kind of um, retarded and defensive about our own retardation. Um, and again,